Well, hi all. I didn't expect to be here and you didn't expect to see me on YouTube, did you? But uh, we're in some different times at the moment. Um, I'd like to say that this is the first time I've done this, uh, but actually this is about the fourth time I've tried to record something. <laughs> it's not gone well so far, so we'll see if we can actually make it through this one. But we're in fairly unprecedented times, aren't we? I just thought that uh, it would be good to do this and to try it out. If you like it, then tell me. And if you don't like it, then tell me um, that as well. And uh, I'll try something different. But it's good to be able to communicate with you and just to say a few things, really. Um, we are in unprecedented times. I've written about that in the uh, village newsletters. But I'm not quite sure that they'll all get out to you, so I just thought, thought that I'd share this way uh, what I've already written for those and just embellish it maybe a little bit. But we've all heard that phrase a lot in this last few days, that these are unprecedented times. It's, however, true, and it's a time when we've got to completely rethink everything. We have to reassess what we do and why we do it, and it's a time to look out for those who are in need. We've got to look out for those who are alone, ill, isolated, are homeless. We've got to support those who will be working long hours in our nursing homes, long hours in our hospitals, home carers. In fact, we've got to look out for everybody and each other. And the truth is, as human beings, we can be great. We can rise to the biggest of challenges. And that's what we now need to be. We've got to be great. And we've got to look out for one another. We need to bring hope, not fear. We need to use our phones to talk to people instead of scrolling down them and staring at them. We need to be bringers of cheer. We need to look out for neighbours and we need to do what we can, but without putting ourselves at risk. A colleague shared a story with me uh, the other day. It was an Australian sheep farmer who came over to this country to research sheep farming. He said to his British counterpart, why do you have so many walls? Why is every field surrounded with a wall? And the British farmer stated what was obvious to him, at least. Well, we need them to keep the sheep in. And the Australian said, well, you need wells, not walls. Sheep gather around wells. And that story struck me very forcibly. In the Old Testament, wells were really important. When people wanted to settle in an area, they did two things. They dug a well and built an altar. It was a marker, it was a sign of life, and it was a sign of hope. People gathered around wells for community, they gathered at the altar for worship. It was a sign of God's presence. So folks, here is our challenge. We've got to be wells. We've got to be wells of kindness and compassion, wells of humour and resolve. We need to be wells of love and peace. We need to be wells of chattiness and phone contact. We've got to be wells of neighbourliness and friendship. We've got to be wells of peace and healing and be wells of the good things that we can be as human beings. Don't risk your own health in doing so because then you won't be any help to anybody, any others. Follow government guidelines. That's really important at the moment. And this is going to be a long process. So pace yourselves. We're going to have to do diff things differently and that includes church. But whilst be, being within the walls of a church may not be possible at the moment, let's be wells for one another and our communities. I can't put any services in any of the newsletters or in the, in the newsletter that I've sent out today, and that's because our Archbishop has advised that we should do things differently. Easter's coming, but we won't be gathering to worship, and that will be bizarre for all of us and probably quite difficult for all of us. However... I'll go online, I'll record services of communion in all the churches at some point over this next few weeks. And at the moment, I am inv investigating how to do everything because this is a complete new ball game for me, a complete new ball game. But, you know, I can try and learn quickly and hopefully communicate with you in this way. If you've got any needs or difficulties, you know where to ring. Website is www.slbchurches.org. Go and have a look on the Church of England website. They're putting up some fantastic resources at the moment to help us with worship in our own homes. 
And over the next few days, and, and in fact, there's already been a lot done this week, uh, we'll try to provide phone cover for people who are isolating. We'll try to disseminate as much information as we can, as widely as we can. For those who believe in the power of prayer, then pray for family and friends and neighbours. Pray for the fearful and the anxious. Turn to God and remember the words that echo through the Bible. Do not be afraid. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Sunday, the 22nd of March, the Archbishop has asked us all to pray. It's Mothering Sunday. He's asked us all at seven o'clock on Sunday evening to light a candle and to say a prayer. And at this time, we need to know that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness will never overcome it. So be at peace, friends. Put a smile on someone's face when you can. Much prayer to you, much blessing, much love. I'll see you this way as often as I can. And uh, take care. Bye now. <laughs>